Here's the scenario. You buy a new gun and after a few games, you want to change how the gun shoots, but you don't know what to do. Well here's some teching info I know you'll need. Okay, so you connect the battery, pull the trigger, hopefully you disengage the safety, and the gun fires. You are completing an electrical circuit. The power from the battery travels through the wiring to the motor and the motor spins, turning the pinion gear, and this drives the gear set. Now the motor consists of the end bell, where the wiring connects, the brushes, because all airsoft motors are brushed, don't ask, there's the motor can that holds the internals, the magnets that create the spin, the armature that spins, and the pinion gear at the end of the armature. Now AEG motors use a conductive material wrapped in copper wiring, and when current runs through the electromagnet, they rotate the armature causing the pinion to rotate. Now most stock motors and low quality motors use ferrous based materials that function well enough to make the gun perform. For aftermarket motors, look for neodymium magnets. This is a rare earth metal that performs several times stronger and efficiently than the ferrous based magnets. Now the determining factor of the strength of the magnets by design is the copper wrapping. The thickness or gauge of the copper wire and the number of wraps around each motor magnet determine strength. Finally, there are the function specs. AEG motors are defined by RPM and TPA. RPM means rotations per minute. TPA means turns per armature. TPA means more to your decision for a motor than RPM, honestly. The TPA is determined by the length of the armature and the amount of wire wraps around the motor magnets and some math that goes beyond what is meant for this video. The TPA will determine the torque and speed of the motor. High TPA means high torque but lower speed. Low TPA means high speed but lower torque. Now an important concept to remember is if the motor is inefficient, the TPA means nothing when comparing motors. For example, take a ferrous based motor with 20 TPA and compare it to a neodymium based motor with 20 TPA. The ferrous based motor will pull at max an M120 spring. The highly efficient neodymium motor will pull an M140 spring because even though they have the same armature design and number of copper wire wrappings on their magnets, the neodymium motor will have more strength because that is a better conductive materials, hence stronger by nature. This concept also extends so you could only need a lower TPA neodymium motor such as 18 to pull the same strength spring as a 20 TPA ferrous motor. And because the motor is efficient, you will also conserve energy, and your battery will last longer. Now how do you apply this? Say standard neodymium motor TPA is 20. Those motors with a TPA higher than 20 are high torque, and those motors with a lower TPA are high speed. So you have a rifle, gun is stock and shoots 380 FPS at 18 rounds a second. The motor is a 16 TPA ferrous motor motor barely functions and whines when you pull the trigger. If you change the spring to an M140, you will need a stronger motor, so you also get a 20 TPA motor. This is assuming the gear set can handle an M140 spring. If you only change the motor and spring, the gun can reach 450 FPS, but the RPS will drop to 10, because by design, the motor cannot spin that fast, but will be able to pull the spring with a standard gear set. Now for a high RPS build, you can change the spring to an M110 and either keep the same motor or go to a 14 TPA motor because of the decreased strain, and you benefit from the higher RPM of the motor. The gun will end up with roughly 330 FPS and the RPS would jump to roughly 24. Another aspect you could take is the high torque motor also comes with quick response. So if you want to improve your semi-auto response, or have a DMR that is semi-auto only, there is a benefit to not having a high RPM motor. I know this is a generalization for both examples, but please be nice comment section. What I can say is with this bit of knowledge, you as a player will be able to make smarter choices with your purchases, and maybe you'll be inspired to invest in improving the performance of your gun.
Thanks for watching this episode of How to Tech Understanding Series. I know this was more info than just a build list, but this kind of knowledge will help you in your purchases for the future. Please let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my info and what you feel I missed that pertains to the subject. If you like this video, please subscribe to get updates on future videos, and please check out my team, Cerberus Tactical Airsoft, on Facebook. Now get out there and play.